EA Sports. It's in the game. If it's in the game, EA Sports. It's in the game. It's in the game. EA Sports. It's in the game. NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. Hey, welcome back. It's been a little bit, hadn't it? Today, we're going to take a look back at a real gem. NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup on the Nintendo GameCube. Since the racing season is about to get into full swing, we just had the Rolex 24, NASCAR is about to get into their season. I figured now would be a good time to take a look back at one of the best racing games to ever come out on a console. And today, I'm going to show you a sample of this game. Basically, it's been a few years since I've turned the game on, and I need to kind of, you know, reacclimate myself with it. So what you're about to see might not be the most professional looking, but it very well could end up being amazing. First of all, if you're any bit familiar with this game, you know what we have to start with. Oh, there it is. That's the moment. All right, watch this talent on display. Hope you have insurance. Yeah, street racing. Hey, it's Ryan Newman. Man, that was some race. You're quite the driver. I don't know if you've ever considered a racing career, but I might just have an offer you can't pass up. I'll have my agent give you a call. See you around. And that's how much talent you have to have to get a ride. As dumb as it is, that's still the greatest prologue in any NASCAR game, hands down. You see, I got Mark Martin here for obvious reasons. Now, if I was a real professional, though, here's what I would do. There he is, the 1990 Daytona 500 champion in all his completely fake glory. So, because we're just having fun here, let's enter some cheats. All the OGs know this one. So now that we are named Open Sesame, we can officially do whatever we want. But there's one more cheat we gotta enter in. Let's say you wanna play Shane Van Gisbergen Simulator, and you wanna tear up the mean streets of Chicago. Well, do this. Walmart exclusive. And there it is, Lakeshore Drive. It's probably bad I have all these uh, cheat codes memorized. Let's get into the race now, races. I wanna just have some fun here. Look at that. Grand Am actually worked its way into this game. I think it's finally time I man up and actually play as Jeff Gordon. How could you run Grand Am Daytona prototypes and not want to take them to Daytona's infield road course? Now granted, this is not the real road course, but you know what? It was close enough for government work. Handling's a little interesting. Not quite prototype feeling. Oh! I, I, put, I put Mikey in the wall. Oh god. Well, I've clearly forgotten how to drive these things. I guess I've got enough laps to figure it out. In fact, I didn't realize this was a 19 lap race. Oh my god. Michael Waltrip is about to pass me on a road course. That is embarrassing. There we go. Well, wow, we're share drafting in Daytona prototypes right now. Let that sink in. Little bit of bumping. That's how you make passes in prototypes, right? Oh, look at look at Tony here blocking mid corner. We are now in the lead, and I gotta try not to wreck out of it. Kind of feel like I've forgot how to drive this place now that I don't have a rabbit to chase. That's the only problem with basing your laps off your competition is what do you do if you start leading? You know, one kind of strange tendency by EA Sports is they always wanted to make their fictional road courses have bank corners. I don't know what caused that fixation, but I think those same designers went on to work for Formula One. It's like they stared at the carousel at Watkins Glen and said, that's just the coolest thing ever. We gotta put that everywhere, man. And there we go. I think this is the first time anyone's ever done a burnout in a prototype. I don't, I don't remember that ever happening. All right, that was cool, but now we're on to the Modifieds, or the Ground Pounders, whatever you want to call them. Either way, they're fast and they're mean, so let's check it out. We're going to drive the car that Ryan Newman provides for us in career mode. Let's see, where would be a good place to head? I do like Rockingham at night. I also like Nazareth, but I think it would be extra funny if we went to Watkins Glen. For one simple reason, let me show you. So let's see how many cars I'm going to be able to pass in just one turn. Game of Chicken.
that wasn't quite as cool as I want it to be. Well, how are we going to make this work into the bus stop? Whoa! That guy got destroyed. Watch out. And that guy who flipped in the bus stop, he's, uh, he's back running, apparently. Must have got out and flipped the car himself. Okay. I don't think that's how you're supposed to do that, but it worked. Whoa! That's how you take the lead. Only reason I'm driving like this is because EA thought it would be a good idea to disable cautions for the modifieds. So if somebody ends up flipping, well, good luck, because you're on your own. All right, so I started dead last, pretty much wrecked every single corner, but in seven laps, I'm going to win by 23 seconds. Give me a real challenge. It's really hard to do a burnout in one of these. It grips too much. All right, let's take it one step farther and move up now to the Craftsman Truck Series. And can you name a better race from the 2004 season than Atlanta? Bobby Hamilton, Mike Skinner coming down to the line. I can still hear Rick Allen screaming about it. So let's try to take that square D truck to victory lane at Atlanta. Only a 15 lap race, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a pit stop in there. So that might make this a little weird. EA Sports and the Atlanta Motor Speedway would like to welcome you to Hampton, Georgia for today's running of the Easy Care Vehicle Service Contracts 200, one of the fastest tracks on the Craftsman Truck Series circuit. Atlanta is known for its high speeds as well as its ample passing room. This one should be exciting right to the finish. Enjoy the race. The green flag is just moments away. Here we go. Matt Crafton's back here with me and my teammate Chad Chaffin. Let's try to make things happen off the get-go. Oh, this, this seems like a bad idea. Oh, I forgot how ungodly loose the apron makes your truck in this game. Yeah, this is, this is kind of, thank you, Carl, for blocking me. This is kind of easy. Just keeping it on the bottom, making it through the field nice and smoothly. Reminder, this is legend difficulty. It's a little different when you're in fight to the top, though, and driving for a not five-star team. And I almost destroyed the field. I did. I did. I ruined Carl. Yeah, he he really got the short end of the stick. I probably have to pit now, don't I? Because the race is so short. Yes. Yes, get me service. Why is no one pitting? Did I do a stupid? I forgot Mr. Clean's my pit crew. Oh, they'll do a nice job. All right, tail end. Here we go. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to the front again, because that was a god-awful restart. Oh, they're pitting! Idiots! Yeah. Yeah, turns out I'm a genius. So we are not going to have a photo finish. In fact, quite the opposite. I just put one lap on the field because I pitted when you're supposed to. That was just really, really stupid on the AI's part. But we got it. That's a lot less cool than how Bobby did it for real. All right, now after that incredible experience, let's head up to the Bush Series, or because of censorship, the NASCAR National Series, as it's called in this game. And you know I gotta go with J.J. Yaley. And I can't name a better track to go to to represent the 2004 Bush Series season than Nazareth. This beautiful and historic racetrack saw its final season of competition in 2004 and is forever immortalized in this now almost 20-year-old game. So let's check it out, reliving the final Gold's Pumps 200. EA Sports welcomes you to the Nazareth Speedway for today's NASCAR Busch Series event, the Gold's Pumps ITT Industries 200. Track conditions are perfect as the drivers are getting strapped into their vehicles. Race time is only minutes away. The racing here in Nazareth is always exciting. Let's see how this one shakes out here today. There it is, Nugget Ranch. I think that's my favorite EA Sports sponsor. Just about fried his nuggets. Why is Kyle Busch back here? And actually also, why is uh, David Green back here? We got some strong Bush Series drivers starting outside the top 35 up to 27th. Oh, that's a, that's a bad idea of a block right there, pal. Luke Nixon? No, thank you. All right, so just by keeping this thing down on the bottom and using the occasional body slam, we are making forward progress. That was
was a save. The, the whole track is just filled with smoke now. Terry Cook is leading this race in his fake Bush Series car truck. I don't, I don't like being on the outside there. All right, I'm short pitting. Mr. Clean will deliver. Well, check it out, a 15-8. Kenny, not a smart place to be blocking. All right, just got around Terry. I guess I'm in the race lead once we cycle through. And if we hold on, that'll mean that Mr. Clean won me this race. Oh, I have just unlocked unlimited speed. I've started downshifting, and man, it's given me acceleration coming off. I'm gonna have to show a little bit of patience with this lap car. I don't even think I want to pass him. Never mind. I wouldn't be able to live with myself knowing there's a car I could have passed and didn't. Here we come. That is Bush Series career win number one for the 2009 F1 World Champion, J.J. Yaley. Look at that scoreboard. Nice. So now let's go big league racing with the NASCAR Next Elk Cup Series. You know I'm driving as Derek Cope. We're going to head to the LA Coliseum, or excuse me, Dodge Raceway Stadium for a 48 lap race. And let's see if uh, Pit Road cooperates, because usually that's the biggest issue with this track. EA Sports welcomes you to NASCAR Next Elk Cup Series short track racing as you've never seen it before. Maitland, Florida is the site for this extraordinary race as the stars of NASCAR gets it to take on this track located inside a football stadium. The action is sure to be great here at Dodge Raceway Stadium as these drivers get strapped in and we get ready to wave the green flag. Brennan gone on pole. What? Yeah, the, the front bumper is going to get a lot of use. So I hope they reinforced it. Hey, look, it's our old friend, Tony Walker. Yeah, man. Kind of wish he wasn't running 33rd, but still. Oh, God. Whoa. You know, it is a really uncomfortable idea trying to pass someone on the outside. And I just killed Rusty. Here we go. And because the field gets frozen with the caution, Rusty gets to start right there. Somebody nailed the barrels. It was Dale Jarrett. I pit, right? Crap. You know, I kind of thought that would automatically pit me. I forgot I had to press yes. I couldn't just hover over it. So now crap's going to get really complicated. Okay, this place is mostly corners. I think I'm going to take some air pressure out the tires. Hopefully I don't go a lap down. And I'll definitely be good to make it to the finish, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to drive back through the entire field. Wait a minute. How am I first? Excuse me. There's something I'm clearly not understanding here. Either I'm not paying attention or some sort of major glitch just happened. Either way, I'm leading. All right, Russell. You don't know who I am, so hang on. Let me in there. And I have dealt with him. So, like, I have no idea at all what happened on that one pit cycle, but it's the only reason why I won. I'll take it. That right there is how you achieve success. Stupidly. All right, so I'm going to do the thing that everyone did when they first unlocked Dale Earnhardt. I'm going to take the plus paint scheme and try to win a mini Daytona 500. I gotta, you know, remind myself of how the drafting physics work in this game. One word describes the place and the race every driver dreams about. A dream about winning. A dream about glory. A dream about history. That word is Daytona. Today, the dream of one driver will come true as EA Sports presents the Daytona 500. That was a nice start. 
four wide. Well worth it. Four wide again. Yeah. Oh, we are flying. Jimmy, bad idea. Very bad idea. There we go. That Johnson run in. Almost lost the draft because of that, but I'm back up in it. Whoa. They're beating and banging up here. Kurt. No, thank you. Really? Jeff Gordon? You don't know how to pass, Rusty Wallace? Come on, Jeff. Come on, put it in there. There you go. No, don't... Don't be doing that. All right, Jeff, if you're not going to pass Rusty, I'll do it for you. There you go. See, not that hard. So, the question is now, are they actually going to be able to catch me? Or am I, for some reason, just going to be fast enough to run out here by myself? All right, it's about time I come to pit lane. Yeah, we're going to go with all four. Might as well get ready for this. You are now witnessing Mr. Cleans pitting Dale Earnhardt's GM Goodwrench Chevrolet. There's Junior, and there's Jeff Gordon, so we're going to cycle out as the leader. Looks like the only guy who's going to catch up to me is probably Jeff Gordon. Ah, uh, me and Jeff Gordon. It just never ends, does it? I'm really glad I took four tires on my pit stop. Otherwise, I'd really, really be struggling with maneuverability right now because i got to block Jeff every which way. All right, the plus car in victory lane at Daytona. It was a little hard to get this thing to spin. So after that Daytona race, let's try something a little bit more challenging. Now, just in case I want to do a video dedicated to exclusively the lightning challenges in this game, I'm not going to do every single one of them, but we're going to take a little bit of a sampler. I'll be honest with you. The lightning challenges in this game, not quite as amazing as the ones that are in NASCAR Thunder 2003, especially, you know, like Mike Skinner's challenge and Jerry Nadeau's. But, you know, this game's got some good ones. They're just not quite as spectacular. The first one as part of the rookie series that we're going to do is a dumb one. We're driving as Kevin Harvick, and we have to catch Ryan Newman and Kurt Busch, who are going to run out of gas. See, just watch the ease of this challenge. Kurt and Ryan both run out of gas, and I honestly don't know how you're supposed to lose this challenge. Way to go! Here, you know what? Let's try to relive Casey Kane's rookie season of pain, where he should have won like eight or nine races, but ended up not winning a single one of them. Let's start off at Rockingham with Matt Kenseth. I 100% forgot how to drive this track in this game. Hang on. There we go. See, not nearly as dramatic as the real finish. But the end result of Casey Kane doesn't get to do anything is exactly the same. And now we get to try to hold off Casey Kane as Elliot Sadler of Texas. Oh, see ya, Jeff. Hey, look, it's Johnny Sauter during his like 10 minute Rookie of the Year campaign with Richard Childress. Okay, we're gonna get it by over two seconds. Certainly not the photo finish it should have been. So this game's got good challenges. I'll probably make a video at some point later on where I complete the rest of them. But for right now, I think we'll move on to the Dodge Speed Zone challenges. Basically, Dodge Speed Zone is like a strange form of tutorial. You'll see what I mean as I get into it, but it's a creative idea. So challenge number one is literally pass as many trucks as possible at California Speedway. Oh God, assists are turned on. And they're so slow. Oh yeah, threading the needle. Yeah, that's max points. And that was stupid easy. So there's five levels for each category. Passing, blocking, drafting, and finally time trials. I'm gonna just quickly speed run these and show you the highlights if there even is any. These are a little bit mundane. 
Oh, Dover is not a good place for a passing challenge. That's gold. Oh, we're doing it in cup cars. Is that Scott Wimmer leading? Get out the way, Scott. Full points. Oh, this one's going to be close again. Oh, yeah, we got it. I'm really not sure how this is supposed to hone my skills any. Hey, look at that. It's fake Mansfield. All right, so now I have to block at Atlanta. Jesus. This makes no sense. Blocking at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Nothing like checking up purposefully so you can get your blocking points. Blocking at Chicago? Really? We're doing this now? Got him! Blocking at Richmond. That's a new one. What? How dare you? Well, thank God that's over. All right, Martinsville? Now you're just trying to be funny. All right, we are now officially done with blocking. Now it's time to draft, which it feels like they should have taught that at the same time as blocking. Well, that was stupid simple. And I still won. See, no big deal. And I also won. There we go. Couldn't quite pull out and make the move as easily there. Right at the line. Got to 100. Oh yeah, share drafting at Texas. Oh god, I'm basically wrecking him. Casey, you gotta charge the corners a little bit deeper when we're doing this stupid drafting package. Got it. Alright, so now on to time trials. Let's start at Old Spice. This is a neat little road course, you know? Very simplistic, very short, but fun at the same time. There it is. All right, we're in a truck now at Watkins Glen. And because of assists, I'm not allowed to actually hustle this thing. These assists make you run like 70 miles an hour under what you should actually be running. I hate everything about them. Oh, come to a stop, why don't you? Barely. Oh yeah, Speedway Boulevard. Has that, like, Need for Speed carbon feel to it. Alright, well, that was all the Dodge Speed Zone challenges. After doing them all again, I can definitely tell you why I forgot about them. It's because they're not memorable. But you know what? I'm about to do something that is memorable. Watch this. Jeff Gordon, in all his road course excellence, never got the chance in his career to run a street circuit. So, we're gonna take his Rainbow Warrior machine to Lakeshore Drive and try to get it in victory lane. I'm gonna start from last at a road course that I've completely forgot how to drive and only got eight laps to make it to the lead. The Windy City, Chicago, Illinois is the site for today's NASCAR Nextel Cup Series racing action as 43 of the world's greatest drivers get ready to tackle this challenging inner city street course. EA Sports is proud to bring you flag to flag racing action from right here in the land of Lincoln. And I'd be willing to bet that these cars will see their fair share of bumps and bruises after racing on this intricate street course. This thing is really tight. Really, really tight for some ungodly reason. All this time, I hadn't noticed I was driving with limited assists. 
That's why the car was tight. I really should have checked that before I started. Here we go, starting back with Dale Earnhardt. Oh, we're making moves quick. Brian, you might want to get out the way a little bit. Regrets. I have many regrets. Look at Scott Riggs. I'm gonna call that one a mulligan. Alright, this time, Brian, you're gonna let me in. There you go. That's being a real teammate. So yeah, that's just something you can do in turn one. There we go, up the outside even. Kind of makes no sense, but we're making a little bit of ground. I'm into the top ten. Oh, this is gonna be easy. I'm into sixth at the end of the first lap. I think I'm channeling more Robbie Gordon again instead of Jeff, but still, we're going forward. Oh, yeah. There it is. To the point. Oh, now I gotta not wreck by myself. This layout of a circuit really does feel like something Champ Car would have done in the mid-2000s if they could have afforded it. I think this is another example where uh, at the fantasy tracks, the AIs aren't really uh, at tip-top performance. You know, we're at halfway, I started dead last, I got a 16-second advantage. I think somebody blew up. We'll find out who that is in just a second. Yeah, somebody definitely blew up. Robbie Gordon, in eight laps, I managed to put about 36 and a half seconds on the field after starting last. I don't know what's up with the AIs here, but I'll take the win. That front end's destroyed. Shout out to a triple number guy actually closing a top 10 finish. All right, I want to do one more thing in this video. Let's create a custom Nextel Cup car. Check this out. I have officially succeeded at creating a bootleg Yates car, the number 98 Ford racing machine. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a 25% race at Red Ball. It's the dead opposite of a Chicago street circuit, but it's what I call home, so let's check it out. Every once in a while, the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series makes a stop at a new track, and that's the case here this evening, as the stars of NASCAR get set to do battle on the short track here at Red Ball Raceway. EA Sports brings you flag-to-flag -flag coverage of this event as we get set to go green. Let's take you trackside now for all the action here at Red Ball. All right, so let's try to make it through the field at fake Mansfield. Car's a little tight, and I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do on the pit stop. The key here is just keep it on the bottom and try to pass everyone by forcing them up the track, kind of like that. Especially like that there, Jeff. He didn't even get mad at me. Guess he's come to expect it. Whoa, Joe. Watch where you're going. Well, apron. Apron. Pull it. Pull it down. This car is starting to lose its tightness. Which is good. It's kind of it's kind of coming to me. Hey, there's Elliot Sadler. I gotta try to blend in with the real Yates cars. I'm not doing a very good job of it. Let's intimidate someone. Haven't had the opportunity to. I don't often do this because I usually end up just wrecking. But there we go. It worked out. I have a tendency of intimidating someone, getting them loose, and then just running into them so I spin out. So I'm a little leery of ever doing it. And by the way, in case you're curious, this really is what Ohio looks like. Old barns. Railway lines, trees everywhere. It's a bit of an acquired taste, but you'll get used to it. Oh, we already got cars coming to pit lane. A little early. It's only lap 30 of 100. I'm coming in on 50. Kyle Petty has the honor of first car to go one lap down that didn't already come to pit lane. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, Doug Ferguson. 
Whoa, Terry. Get a little better spotter next time. Oh, these are probably not the things I should be doing with lap traffic. So I'm easily within my pit window. But I kind of just want to get a feeling of what the rest of the field's going to do. Because I don't want to give them too big of a tire advantage. So we got a lot of the field coming to pit lane. I'm going to make my stop on lap 69 because of course... Of course it would end up this way. Did you notice that the Mr. Cleans are so clean, in fact, that they're unaffected by shadows? Either that, or they produce light. To the point. Oh! Don't block on the straightaway, Jamie. Come on, you're like two laps down. Wow, we're really lapping some hot rods right now. About to get around Kenseth. Got Earnhardt, Johnson, Stewart up there, Russell. Well, I have ran into both Yates cars. Oh, of course Robbie Gordon wants to put up a fight on the last lap to try to not go a lap down. You're not getting that satisfaction, Robbie. And we are putting the fake Yates car, Walmart exclusive, wins the Red Ball 400. And we almost lapped the whole field. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that, the only car that finished on the lead lap, Dale Jr. There he is, Walmart exclusive himself, Captain Capitalism. Brought to you by Mr. Clean and refreshed by Great Value Cola. Alright, I think that race was a good way to close this one off. I hope you enjoyed it, it's always fun to go back and revisit these golden era NASCAR games. You know, like the Thunder games, uh, Dirt Today Tona, this right here, Chase for the Cup, always makes for a good time. I wanted to show off some of the more insane crap that you can do with this game before we head into some conventional, you know, career mode or lightning challenge videos. And you know, it's really hard to believe that this game's gonna turn 20 years old this year. I mean, it holds up so incredibly well compared to, especially its modern competition. And now that you know NASCAR races on the streets of Chicago and inside a stadium, this game's getting more topical by the minute. Anyways, I wanted to take a moment and thank all of my channel supporters. You really do help keep the show going, and I hope to pay it forward this year with the content on the channel. As I've already hinted at, there's going to be some more Chase for the Cup content coming up soon. And remember, if you got any recommendations for something that you'd like to see on the channel, let me know. But anyways, that concludes our little revisiting of NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup. I really hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you next time.